Good morning to all. Myself, Professor Prashant Mahajan, working as an assistant professor at AISSMS Institute of Information Technology. So, in the last lecture, we have seen conductometric titration. Uh, so, we have seen four titrations. So, this is the alternate method for volumetric titration. So, in volumetric titration, we are using indicator to note the color change. But in the case of conductometric titration, we are going to note down the conductance of the solution and after that we are going to plot the graph and finally we will get the end point of the titration. Similarly today we are going to see the pH metric titration. So what is pH? So from 12th you know that what is pH? So pH it is nothing but minus log to the base 10 of H plus ion concentration. So this is pH of the solution. Similarly, POH is minus log to the base 10 of OH minus ion concentration and pH plus POH is equal to pKW is equal to 14. So this term pH was introduced by Sorensen in the year 1909. So that is pH. Then there are two types of buffer. One is acidic buffer and second is basic buffer. <coughs> so what is acidic buffer? How it is prepared? So acidic buffer it is prepared by mixing weak acid with salt of weak acid and strong base. Means what? Weak acid as we see in the last lecture that is acidic acid and salt of weak acid and strong base that is acidic acid is a weak acid and NOH is the strong base. So that is one acidic buffer. Similarly basic buffer is there that is weak base with the salt of weak base and strong acid. So NH4OH is the weak base and strong acid is HCl. So uh, what is buffer solution? So buffer solution is the solution which resists change in the pH on, um, on addition of small amount of acid or base. How it works? So you can see from the below diagrams that action of buffer solution. So you can see Suppose we are considering basic buffer solution. So we are considering NH4OH and NH4Cl. So on dissociation, NH4OH will give you OH minus and NH4 plus. Similarly, NH4Cl will give you Cl minus and NH4 plus. So when we are going to add acid in the basic buffer solution, that H plus of the acid will combine with the OH minus of the base and it will form H2O. That means there is no effect of this H plus on this basic buffer solution. Similarly, when we are going to add OH minus in the buffer basic buffer solution, that OH minus will combine with NH4 plus and it will give you ammonium hydroxide. So ammonium hydroxide is already present in the solution. So that means it will not going to change the pH of the buffer solution. Similarly, you can consider the case of acidic buffer. So you can see this is the acidic buffer that is acidic acid giving H plus and acetate ions. Similarly, sodium acetate will give you sodium plus acetate minus ion. So when we are going to add OH minus in the acidic buffer solution, so that OH minus will combine with this H plus and it will give you H2O. Similarly, when we are going to add H plus, in the solution that H plus will combine with the acetate minus ion and that will produce acetic acid which is present in the solution. That means that will not change the pH of the acidic buffer and basic buffer. So change will be there but it is up to small extent that means up to 0 0.02 0 0.03. Okay so that is the action of buffer solution. So the next is pH metric titration of acids. So as we know the first step is always the standardization of pH meter. So you can see the part one that is procedure part one is standardization of pH meter. So first one we have to calibrate the pH meter. So for that connect the glass and calomel electrode to the pH meter and pH meter to the electricity. So we have to connect the glass and calomel electrode. So in that Glass electrode will act as an indicator electrode and calomel electrode will be acting as a reference electrode. Clean the electrode with the distilled water. So we have to clean the electrode which is previously used in the last experiment. 
or last batch we have to clean that electrode with the distilled water then keep the temperature knob on temp temperature of the solution that we are going to keep it as 25 degree celsius then keep the functional knob on on ph so ph meter is having uh, or ph meter is the application of potentiometer means what there is uh, when you are going to see the ph meter there are two functions one is millivolt that is the measurement of potential and other is ph so we have to keep the functional knob on ph then immerse the electrode in ph7 solution if the digital display is not showing ph7 then adjust by using calibration knob so we have to calibrate that ph meter that means we have to put that or keep that glass electrode in the ph7 solution if it is showing ph7 then it is okay if it is not showing ph7 then you have to calibrate use the calibration knob and make that ph7 then remove the electrode from ph7 solution clean with distilled water and keep <coughs> sorry deep in the ph4 solution if the digital display is not showing ph4 then adjust by using slope knob okay so you can see if you are using ph7 then you have to use calibration knob and when we are using ph4 solution then we have to use slope knob but in both cases we have to check whether the ph is showing ph7 or ph4 if it is not showing then we have to just calibrate that ph meter then next last step is remove the electrode and clean with distilled water repeat above step to ensure the standardization then the second part is titration of strong acid versus strong base so as in the case of conductometry we have taken hcl in the beaker and noh in the burette similar is the case but in that case we are going to measure conductance so we got v shaped graph and in this case we are going to measure ph so we know hcl is the acid so the conductance will be from 0 to 7 and noh is the base then the con sorry hcl is the acid so the ph of the solution is below 7 and if noh is there in the beaker then the ph will be above 7 that is up to 14 so what we have to do so see wash the electrode with the water then pipette out 25 ml of hcl solution in 100 ml beaker keep the magnetic stirrer on so we have to take or pipette out 25 ml of hcl solution in the 100 ml beaker then fill the burette with standard 0.1 normal noh solution immerse the electrode in the solution in beaker note the ph at initial so we have to take ph for 0 ml of noh so as we know hcl is the strong acid the ph will start from 2 to 3 add 1 ml of burette solution stir using magnetic stirrer and note down the reading that is when we are going to add 1 ml noh that ph will going to be increased so it will increase slowly slowly up to the end point similarly the ph of the each ml of the solution of burette is noted note down 4 to 5 readings after second sudden increase of ph is observed means what you have to do so you can see the graph directly so this is your graph hcl versus noh so we are having in beaker hcl and we are going to add noh from the burette so as we know that hcl is the strong acid so hcl is having ph from 0 to 2 so we are going to add noh that means what that hcl is going to react with noh that means what that hcl is going to be reduced from the or it is going to be the concentration of hcl is going to be vanish from the solution and it is going to be neutralized by that noh so that is hcl uh, that ph is going to increase slowly that means up to the equivalence point the solution is having hcl that's why the ph is below 7 okay at equivalence point the solution is having equal ml of hcl is equal to the ml of noh so at equivalence point hcl is equal to 
NOH. After equivalence point, that ML of excess ML of NOH is added in the solution. That's why the conductor is sharply increases up to 12. So you can see before equivalence point, the solution contained HCl. After equivalence point, the solution contains excess of NOH. That's why the curve is obtained. So that is called as S-shaped curve. And as we know that HCl and NOH is a strong acid and strong base. That's why we are getting equivalence point at exactly 7. So that is the first graph that is pH versus ML of NOH added. Similar way, if you do the calculation, you will get the second graph that is delta pH upon delta V versus ML of NOH. So you will get peak and that peak, it is nothing but the end point of the titration. Similarly, you will get this second graph, uh, third graph also delta square pH upon delta V versus mean V. So that are the three graphs uh, for pH metric titration of <coughs> strong acid versus strong base. And this is the diagram of electrode dipped in the beaker. So that's it uh, for pH metric titration of HCl versus NOH. So that's it from today's lecture. Thank you.